Hello everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to take care of a Venus flytrap, but first we need to talk a bit about these plants. So Venus flytraps, um, these are bog plants. Um, they live in North Carolina and some parts of Texas, and they may live in South Carolina, but I'll have to look that up later. And um, these species are endangered in the wild, so if you ever happen to um, see a Venus flytrap when you take a trip to North Carolina or Texas, feel free to take pictures of it, feed it, take videos of it. But otherwise, leave it where it is, because I'm sure it's happy where it is. And these are protected by, by law, and taking them from the wild is considered poaching. So anyway, that's enough with that, and let's get on to the care. So taking care of Venus flytraps is by no means simple. In fact, um, I'd put these at an intermediate to expert. So if you're an intermediate with carnivorous plants like me, you have a couple of species and you know what it's about, then yes, get a Venus flytrap. But if you're a beginner... Please don't, because these are not houseplants, and the beginners often think that they are houseplants, or they make the mistake of following the instructions it says on the box that you got it from. But we'll get to why they aren't houseplants later, but first we need to start off with soil mixes. So I like to keep mine simple, I just mix it with um, um, peat moss and sphagnum moss. Of course you can add sand to, to this in perlite, but I just like to keep it simple. Next is water. Um, so down here I have a drainage tray. And um, I this isn't really a drainage tray because I use tray method for all of my temperate carnivorous plants because they require wet soaked soils. So never um, ever let this dry out and never ever let your drainage tray dry out. Always keep it constantly filled with water because these plants will suffer. Even if you just let the top layers of soil dry, um, don't do it. Just please don't do it. So next, we're going to talk about feeding these guys. Um, so if you have them outside, which you should have them outside, they will just feed themselves. You can see that there's a bug in here, there's a bug in here, there's a bug in here, and there's probably a bug in that one, but I'm not sure. So um, once your Venus flytraps are done with their bugs, um, I'd recommend that you get a toothpick or a pair of tweezers and pull the bug out. Um, because if you don't brush their teeth, um, this trap, you will eventually lose this trap because what happens is the bug, it gets in here and, um, it just stays there and it starts to get mold and it'll eventually kill this trap and then you won't have this one anymore. So that's pretty much all for the feeding. Now we need to get to, um, lighting. So lighting is very, very important. This can, um, dictate whether your Venus flytrap will look nice and healthy like mine, or sun-starved, like, like they used to look. So, um, the reasons why these don't make houseplants, one reason is light, and another reason is temperature. These plants require 80s to 90s, and they can tolerate the 100s, but I wouldn't recommend that you put them in the 100s. Um, and in a house, you can't really get to the same heat that you'll get outside, and you can't really get the same lighting that you'll get outside unless you have an ultimate grow setup and stuff. Anyway, that's pretty much all for the heat and lighting. Um, now I'm going to talk a bit about dormancy. So dormancy is surprisingly simple as far as Venus flytraps go. I like to cover mine in two plastic bags. Of course, what I like to do is I like to, um, cut, to cut off their water supply by, um, by 78%. Because in the winter, they like their soil to be a little bit dry. If you have their soil wet, they will still think that it's okay to be out and they will freeze to death. So don't do that. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, thank you for watching and bye.